In today's episode of Mental Health Mastery, we're talking to Jason Gerardo of One Path Coaching, and he's here to talk to us about NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming, and in particular, submodalities and how we can reprogram our lives. Now we covered a lot, so I included timestamps below along with all of his contact information. And with that, let's welcome Jason. Welcome, Jason. I was hoping we could start with a brief introduction on who you are and what you do, because I know you're very specialized. Yes, thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Jason Gerardo. I am the owner of One Path Coaching, and my background and training is in neurolinguistics, so NLP, hypnosis, and a process called timeline therapy. And I've been certified for 12 years, and I had my master practitioner about seven years ago, and I've been seeing clients since that time. Okay. Well, NLP fascinates me. So why don't you give us a little introduction into the topic? NLP, the easiest way to describe NLP is using the language of the mind to get the results that you want. As a marketer, I've heard a lot about it because my career started in marketing and I know that they, you can use it for, for different marketing tactics to kind of subtly persuade people to do, do things. So I'm curious to see how it plays into the world of, of psychology and therapy. Yeah, you know, they, Richard Bandler and John Grinder are the two that, that have credit for making NLP. NLP is, there's a, there's a huge part of NLP called modeling, and which is you're, you're taking the best of something and seeing what works and then using it for yourself, basically. And there's actually a technique that we use with clients about modeling for greatness. Uh, and that's how NLP was designed. And so the two of them with a bunch of students at uh, Santa Cruz University did a lot of testing and they had backgrounds in different types of, uh, therapies and things of that nature. And they saw basically what worked. They took different modalities and they would kind of digest them and say, Hey, let's, let's play with this and see what works. And so it's, you know, a little bit of hypnosis from Erickson, Virginia Satir uh, with family therapy, Gregory Bateson with language. They did a couple of different people as well. Uh, Gestalt therapy, uh, Fritz Perls, Richard Bandler actually worked with Fritz Perls. And so they took those and they kind of digested them down. And NLP is, you know, I, I wrote down the four pillars of NLP. It's about outcomes, uh, sensory acuity, behavior flexibility, and rapport. So it's really getting to know the person, really seeing what's going on with them, and then getting results. It's all results driven. One of the things, one of the, the things that people have commented about NLP is like, where's the humanistic side? because it's about getting results. And early NLP was very much based on just that. You have an issue. Okay, let's do this, this, and this. Now you don't. <laughs> fast, you know, fast therapy, so to speak. Yeah. And as somebody who's gone off on a journey to learn healing, I wanted results. <laughs> give me results. <laughs> don't give me this fluffy stuff. I want results. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the one of the the benefits of it, and at the same time, it's something that you have to be aware of. There's people that have really done a, a great job with taking core NLP, and it's NLP is it was originated around the early 1970s, and so not that old actually when you think about it. But it's gone through a lot of transitions, and and Richard Bandler went on his way and did a lot of things, and John Grinner did a lot of he's done different things in other arenas, and so it's evolved over time. And people have done a really good job with making it more humanistic, uh, as well as just getting results. And how does the modalities and submodalities fit into all of this? So I think the best place to start with submodalities is to talk about modalities. So modalities are representational systems, and it's our senses. So it's like our sight, which is visual, our sound, which we call auditory, and our feelings, uh, kinesthetic, and that's also kinesthetic is also touch and emotions, and to a lesser degree, smell and taste. So how we sense the world, those are our modalities. That's really what we're looking at. We use those modalities to make what's called strategies in our lives. Everything that we do in life has a strategy. So whether it's buying something or going to the store or um, anything you do in life, driving a car, et cetera, we have a strategy and it's like, what do you start with first? And those are broken down into modalities. So when you think about buying something, so what's the first thing you do when you buy something? What's my buying strategy? Well, the first thing I have to do is I have to see something I want. So that's visual. So my first step is visual. Then my second step is for me, I want to touch it. I want to get a feeling for the item. Let's say, say it's a sweater. 
And then, okay, I like it. Now I buy it. So my strategy is visual kinesthetic, what we call visual kinesthetic. And that's my buying strategy. Now it's not a great one because it's very short and I might just buy the whole store, right? But those are strategies. That's how we do it. Now, the intensity of the meaning of that event, though, comes from direct relationship to our submodalities. And submodalities are, com are the component elements of what makes up each modality. So when you think about it, like, so for visual, which is the modality, submodalities of visual, is it black and white? Is it near or far? Is it bright or dim? What's the size of the picture? What's the location of the picture? Um, auditory. You know, which is the modality. Submodalities of auditory are location, direction, loudness, um, the tone, prosody, as they say about voice, things that we look at, and that's how the intensity of the of the event comes through to us. That's how we record it, basically, in our mind. Now, the great news is is that we can adjust that. So, you know, if how do you know? that you love a certain dessert and how do you know that you don't like another dessert as an example or how do you remember to have negative feelings about an event that is all in the coding that's all in the submodalities and the pictures that we keep it in our in our heads so something that's very important about um submodalities and about eliciting them and you know, finding out what the picture looks like. So that's something that I would do working with someone is I would ask you, you know, like now for the exercises, we're just doing a, a quick thing and kind of giving a taste of it. If I was working with you as an actual client, what I would do is I would say, do you have a picture? And then I actually have a checklist and I go through this checklist to get this information from you about what this picture looks like. The thing about we're working with the unconscious mind the unconscious mind works really fast. It wants to go fast. So there's a diff there's a really close difference between elicitation and installation. So if I was to ask you about a certain picture that you have in your head, if I was to say, this is the wrong way, by the way, if I was to say this picture is in color, and you'd say, yeah, or is it black and white? Oh, yeah black and white because our unconscious mind is like let's try that on so when we do it we go really fast and we say this picture is a color of black and white is it near or far is it bright or dim is it so that way the unconscious mind is giving you the actual picture not what you think the picture should be so it's very important on how you elicit it um, the other thing i wanted to mention is you know we're talking about using submodalities and kind of designing your life in it to an extent one thing that's really great is using this for setting your goals. So when we set goals, it's, it's the step that really the NLP has taken. And you know, there's a lot of goal setting programs out there. There's a lot of ways to set goals, a lot of things. And you know, people out there have probably tried to set goals and maybe not achieved them. This is one thing that works really well. And that's kind of the difference about NLP goal setting. So you would set your goal and, you know, whether you use smart goals or any of those other programs out there to really get a definite goal, of what you want. So you get that goal. Now, the step that works with the modalities is what you do is you think if I had achieved this goal, what picture would I see when I know I fully have it? Then you take that picture and now we're going to adjust the submodalities. So what you do is you see, the first thing you do is you see yourself in that picture, achieving your goal. Then you go what we call associated and you go into yourself in that picture, looking through your own eyes, looking through your own eyes in that last picture, that way, you know, you have your goal. You now adjust the submodality. So it's the most intense. So maybe you change the brightness. Maybe you change what you hear. Someone saying, great job, or you're telling yourself, hey, I finally did it. You adjust those submodalities to, to have the most compelling picture. And then what you do is you step back out of that picture, which we call disassociated. So now you see yourself in that picture. And then there's one of two things you can do with it. You can either just seal it like we did before and seal that picture. And that puts that in your future, knowing that that's how you achieve that goal. Something else I'm training is called timeline therapy. And it's just based on that all of your memories, your past and your future memories are all on a line. 
And what we would do is we would take that that memory and we'd pick it up and we would go out into your future with it to that time. You say, oh, this is going to be achieved in three months. You would pick it up and go out in your timeline three months in the future and drop that three months in the future and then just watch your life uh, reevaluate yourself now that you have made that goal between now and then. And it really helps you achieve your goals. And that's using submodalities. Okay. You shared with me off camera an example about a client that you had. I think that'd be very beneficial to 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 share that example so that we could see it in action. So yes, um, I had a client that had unfortunately been a witness to an accident and it was a tragic accident. And when she had come to me, she was having problems sleeping. She was very stressed out. Um, all of the reactions to having seen that event. So as we as we talked and kind of found out what was going on, I saw that it was uh, ecological because it's very important. We don't change these things. These are very these are very powerful techniques. But it was very ecological to change that picture inside of her head because the problem was the intensity of that event. The picture that she had of that event was so strong that it was overwhelming her emotions. And so what we did specifically is, and this is something where then how you adjust uh, submodalities is, you know, we talked about what picture it looked like for her. And this was something that she was in, you know, she was with me. I made sure she knew she was safe, that she was in a good, a good place. We could stop at any time, had her bring that picture back up to mind. And the picture was really bright. It was really big. It was right in front of her. So what we did is we went in there, we darkened the picture, we made it a little bit fuzzy, we moved it away from her, and ultimately what we did is we made the side of a postage stamp in her mind and sent it away. And it just took the intensity off of that off of that image. We did it a couple times, you know. The sub the, we work with the unconscious mind, which some people call the subconscious mind, and it learns really fast, but sometimes we don't work so fast. And so we did the process a couple times and the picture was gone. And, you know, we talked about sensory acuity, just watching her, her tone of her skin shifted. She got color back in her skin. She was, her breathing was, was more regulated. I could just really tell that it, she really made a shift just by changing that photo. Yeah. That's two of the things that amaze me about some of the therapies that are out there is the power of our mind and how we can reframe things and the power of a good therapist who can pick up on our little nuances and, and our, our tone or, or just how we're sitting and, and really work with that, see that and get in there and, and make another little shift. And yeah, that's one of the main things about NLP. The first thing that you learn when you learn LP is sensory acuity. So you watch, like I was saying, skin tonus, breathing, um, color, things of that nature. So you can then make sensory-based judgments, so, so to speak. So it's not like, oh, well, if someone crosses their arms, you know, body language, the NLP doesn't use body language, but there's body language people that use that talk about body language. And it's like, well, if you cross your arms, that means you're closed off. Well, in NLP, we would just make a note when this was when this came up the client put their arms across their chest it's just sensory based now if it comes up again they do it now that might be a, a trend that might be something to look at but maybe the arms on the chair just weren't comfortable and they moved their arms so so it's very important to be sensory based especially when you're making these sometimes little shifts to really be able to pay attention to where they're going and to see you're going in the right direction with them now do you have uh, examples of strategies or exercises um something that i would like to talk about you know strategies is a whole nother thing and that's something that's very important as well that's a that's a bigger picture and you know I, on strategies i'll just say if there's an area in your life that's not going the way that you want it to there's two things that if i was working with you we would look at values and strategies so what's most important to you and how are you making things happen or not happen in life? Now, knowing that submodalities are a subset of that, just working with the submodalities, yeah, I have, I do have a couple things to to help people kind of get a feel for it. Um, let's see here. So, if you think about, for those out there watching us, and you as well, if you could just think about maybe a past pleasant experience, something that was nice, something that you had a good memory. And just think of it. And when you think about it, do you have a picture? 
Okay. Now, the first thing I want to do is let's just adjust one of the submodalities. So let's just adjust visual. Okay. And so wherever your picture is at, make it a little darker. And see how that feels. Now go ahead and make it bright again. Make it the same brightness that it was. Take it back. We want to make sure it's just the way it was. Okay. And now thinking of that same pleasant experience, you have that picture. Move where that picture is. So wherever in your mind, when you think of that picture, wherever that shows up in your world, is it in front of you? Is it to your left? Is it behind you? Just move it. Move it five feet in one direction. And then see how that memory fills. And then go ahead and move it back. And now let's go ahead and make sure make sure that picture is exactly the way it was when you started, if you want to. It, maybe you found when you moved some stuff, it made it a little bit better, a little nicer. And that's that's always a positive thing. And just move it back. Make that picture the same way it is. And then you could do one of two things. We talk about um, the, the people that remember Tupperware. The sound that Tupperware makes when it seals, go ahead and seal that picture up. Or you can do like a mouse click. We all use computers nowadays, right? And just click it and lock that picture back into place. This is, and the reason we do it just gently like this and very subtly, even as an, as a, as an example, this is very powerful. Some modality shifts work really well. And you know, something that I wanted to mention is that we can do these small shifts ourselves. These are things that we can definitely do in our lives. If we find something like as the example of a picture that was bothering us, we can adjust that picture and take control. For the bigger things in life, I highly suggest you work with someone that's trained because this is very powerful stuff. And to move it in the right direction, to adjust it the correct way, to get the results that you truly want. Um, you know, This isn't something to kind of just play around with too much. It's fun. It's interesting to get a taste of it. But it is something that's very powerful. Yeah, I can attest to that. I I know that when I was I was doing some somatic work for a very traumatic event, and it there was times it would get overwhelming. And because I was there with a trained professional, they were able to help me really uh, get curious, oscillate out of it, do all these things that on my own I never would have been able to. I would have been completely overwhelmed by everything. Yeah, that's a great point. And you know, it's it, I, I tell people that there's a lot of these techniques that are techniques. And their step-by-step -step techniques. And that does take some training. But the training really comes in when the technique doesn't work. Mm -hmm. When something doesn't go according to plan. Or something shows up. If I'm working with a client on adjusting. So that client I talked about adjusting the picture of the accident. If she would have ab reacted to what we were doing. That's when my training really comes in. How do, how do I support that client the best way? How do I help them you know, not go detrimentally in the wrong direction? Yeah, yeah, no, very it's really true. important. Okay. Um, so do we have, can we do one more exercise? One more little fun one? Yes, definitely. So let, let's go ahead and pick something that you may not like too much, but you would like to like it more. Mm -hmm. Making sure it's really something that you really want to change your relationship to. So whether it's a food that you think, you know, I don't really care for X, but I would like to like it more. I really, I really think it's positive. Or maybe it's a task. You know, there's a task that, you know, I got to do it every day. And I, I really wish I was more motivated to do it. I wish I really something that that I really could engage in better. And I just right now I'm just when I think about it, I kind of, nee. you know, think about that way. Okay. So go ahead and think about something that you that you want to change your relationship to. And when you think of that item or task, do you have a picture? All right. So go ahead and take that picture. Let's make it a little bit brighter. In your mind, when you think of that picture, make it a little bit brighter. Now bring that picture a little bit closer to you. Make sure it's in front of you. If that feels best for you, it's going to, everyone has a little nuance, but make sure it's kind of in front of you. Don't bring it too close. Just make sure that it, you'll get that feeling. When you move it, you'll feel it. So it's a little bit brighter. The picture is clearer. It's very crisp. It's in front of you. Bring it a little bit closer just to see how that feels. And when that picture, when that changes, when you feel it, maybe it's a little warm feeling in your chest. Maybe it's a little excitement. You feel that. 
Go ahead and leave that picture right there. And like I said before, the picture that Tupperware, the sound that Tupperware makes, you could seal it or you could just like a mouse click, click it in place. And then we do what we call clear the screen. So just think of another picture. Think of a, a beautiful day outside. Think of a, a snowstorm, a nice sunny day. Think of another picture. And then over time, just see how you feel when you think about that item. See if your relationship changed to that. Would it work in reverse? Can it get me off Dairy Queen? <laughs> That's, that is a great point. That it, and yes, it can. It very much can. And it depends on how invested you are on, on changing that picture. But very similar to um, what I was talking about with a client, it's the same thing. You just make that picture less intense. And you, you take away that visual because that's how you know that you like Dairy Queen, believe it or not. You know, when you think of uh, ex my ex personal example is Coke. I love Coca-Cola. I, I don't want to, but it's just a fresh retreat. When I said Coca-Cola to you, the picture in my head was almost like a commercial. It's that glass with the, the, the bubbling ice and it's, it's like sweaty. The glass is sweaty a little bit. And it's, you could see the pop and the fizz. It's a little refreshing. That's the picture I have in my head. If I truly wanted to not want to drink Cokes anymore, what I would do is I would just change that picture. And I would probably, there's, there's what we call um, drivers. And drivers are the, the difference that makes the difference. So what that means is the submodality changes that you make that makes the most difference for you. You see that I'm doing visual. Visual is usually the ones that work the most for people. We can work with the other modal with the submodalities of the other ones, auditory, you know, kinesthetic things of that nature. But usually, the brightness and location are two of the main things that that affect how we relate to these photos and these mental images. Say thank you so much. <laughs> this was very <laughs> informative, and I'm very, yes. I'm going to do some googling now, and I want to learn more <laughs> about this. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and you could always reach out to me if you have a question or something specific. Just shoot me an email, and I'd love to to respond. Yeah, and for viewers, I'm going to leave all your contact information in the description on YouTube and the show notes on our podcast. And Perfect. yeah, it was it was lovely to meet you in person, and thank you yes. so much. Thank you. <laughs>